Okay, in this presentation, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the dispersion parameter. Then this is related to uh, Poisson regression and essentially all types of uh, processes where you're modeling count variables. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start off here with a very simple, um, uh, a very simple analysis, and this is actually based on. Uh, a, a study of the Prussian cavalry, and this is where actually the um, the idea of a Poisson distribution and a Poisson process comes from. So essentially, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simulate 200 uh, 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 Poisson counts, okay, where the lambda, which is the Poisson mean, is not 0.61. Again, that is actually reflects what actually happened in this actual study okay so it's a little bit of an interesting history as to why why this uh, how the Poisson distribution came about so I'm just gonna run it there okay it's just a little data set and I can just above it put in I'll just run this for a second cavalry and it was essentially over the period of um, uh, 10 years or something like that, uh, how many injuries there were in 20 divisions of um, the Prussian cavalry. Okay, so the first 10 will be uh, uh, correspond to a year, okay, and that will correspond to the number of, well, I think it's deaths or fatal injuries or uh, requirement of uh, discharge at least, how many serious accidents there were in each division per year so the first that's the first that's each division in the first year that's each division in the second year and so on you get the idea there okay so this is a Poisson process okay and we notice that we get even actually a, like for this uh, study here we actually get quite a few zeros okay and a, a three and so on okay now that's just beside the point, really. So what I'm actually interested in is, this is the sort of key element of the Poisson distribution. So first off, I'm gonna compute the mean and the standard deviation there, okay. Let's just run that again. I think I just, uh, it's actually slightly low, but again, it's just, just to pure, purely just to randomness. I was expecting something slightly higher. Not that it has to be higher, not that it has to be not 0.61. But anyway, what I got here is the mean and the um, variance. And if you know the Poisson distribution, you'll know that the mean and the variance should be very close to each other. And in this particular instance, yes, they are. The 0.65 is the mean for this process, and not point sorry, 0.565 is the mean for the process, and 0.548 is the variance. And those values are relatively close together. Okay, so. The, the, uh, the dispersion parameter is as follows, okay? So we're gonna call it theta, and this is actually used in a lot of model uh, count variables. It's the ratio of variance to um, the expected value. And the idea is that it should be approximately equal to one, okay? So theta is it approximately equal to one, okay? This is something you have to check, okay? Now, um, so, in this particular instance, our theta value there is the variance of cavalry divided by the mean of cavalry. In this case, it works out to be 0.933. Okay. Now, so when you're actually trying to model a, a account process, what you've got to do is actually check this because you have to sort of see, is there over dispersion? Is there zero inflation? You have to check a couple of things, okay? And so what's going to happen, so essentially this is like, in this particular instance, it looks like the, the general Poisson regression is quite sufficient, okay? The, 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 the sort of the first type, the, the most, the basic type, the, fun, the, the, one, the first type you'll meet when you in, uh, start studying count variables, okay? So in this particular instance, we seem to have a quite good fit. Obviously that makes sense because we just fitted the model be a Poisson process, so, you know, we, we, should, we should expect that. Now, something you could do actually is that you could actually just sort of uh, test the, come up with a little simulation exercise. Because there's no real good way I find of um, testing like confidence intervals because you have to sort of make a decision how, 
much is how over dispersed or un, under dispersed or whatever how should it be before you have to sort of conclude it's over dispersion over dispersion is present okay so what you could do here is actually run a quick simulation study okay and so what i'm doing here is setting up a little uh, empty a container object ratio and i'm going to run 10,000 iterations so a for loop there you know it's it's a very old fashioned way of doing things i suppose but just actually it gets the job done right um, and then just simulate, uh, here I just change things, uh, rpos equals 200 and lambda equals 5. Um, you, we could change it back to 0 0.61 or whatever, but actually this is the key thing we're interested in, the sample size. Okay, And essentially come up with a ratio there. Okay, So it's a bit of a sort of crude method, but I think it's actually very effective. Okay, So um, it's essentially a, a confidence interval by proxy, although it's... You, people may say, that, well, that's not exactly a confidence interval. Yeah, it's, it's, it's essentially gives us a fair idea of what we should expect, though, all the same. Okay, so let's just run it there, and there we go. So, not point uh, 0.815 is the 2.5% quantile to 1.2. So, essentially, you can actually look at, sort of look at these as sort of critical values that, you know, for a sample size of 200, you know, 90 or 95% of the variance ratios or the theta values are between 0.81 and 1.2. You can actually ramp it up a little bit more here just to get more fine tune it a bit. Might sort of slow down the um it might slow things down a little bit, but it essentially gives us much more pers um uh, well um it should give us fairly close values, uh, but essentially it just gives us a bit more, something that we can sort of like, you know, for practical purposes, this is a sort of, tells us how, what sort of over dispersion level we should have. So again, it's a, it's something very close to what I had there before, uh, 0 0.813 and to 1.206, okay? So essentially if your dispersion parameter is within that range, and the sample size is 200, of course. This is all depending on the sample size. You do not, uh, you, you can sort of, the assumption of equal variance, you know, that null hypothesis is of the expected value and the variance, you know, uh, being equal to each other. You can fail to reject that. You can look at it as a hypothesis test. Okay, and these are the critical values. Okay, that's just one way of doing it now, okay? And again, it is a bit crude, but it works, okay? Because I'm not too happy about, there's a, a sort of lack of proper guidance there. So this is a sort of fairly robust way, even though it's a little bit crude. Okay.